If you stick it in the sleeping bag, it makes the entire inside perfect. All right, you guys, this is gonna be a pretty good video. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about um, how I stay warm when I'm camping, when I'm out overlanding. I'm Brian from Northwest Bronco. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to my channel, you have no idea what I'm all about. Uh, what I do is I go out into the, some of the most remote places in Oregon, and I go out there and I film and document historical things. Um, and then while I'm out there, I usually camp uh, one or two nights. So because I'm in the Oregon desert doing most of my explorations, um, I go from being really hot to really cold during the day and at night. Um, so I have kind of a three-step uh, sleeping system that I use that I'm gonna be showing you today. So without further ado, let's go out in the garage where the overland equipment is and uh, I'll show you what I use for a sleeping system. So welcome to the Northwest Bronco Garage. So in case you haven't seen any of my videos before, this is the Bronco that I use to go out and do my explorations. And off to the left here is the shelf where I keep all my equipment. So really quick, I'm gonna go over kind of what's on my shelf and how I keep things organized. And then I'm gonna show you my sleeping system. Now I totally get it that this video is not about um, how I organize my equipment on the shelf here, but I figured it might be kind of fun to talk about it um, because we're here and uh, we have the camera out. All right, this is gonna be really brief, but the Bronco's behind you and everything I have is on these two shelves here and they're divided into two different categories. This shelf over here is everything that has to go in the Bronco. Everything that is over here has to go in. So. Uh, whenever I go on a trip, I can be out of here in like 20 minutes because as long as this shelf is empty, I know how I have everything I need to do one or two nights out in the Oregon desert. Now this side over here is everything that's optional. So it depends on if I'm going with other people, if I'm planning on having a campfire, is it going to be warm? Is it going to be cold? Um, am I camping with my son? You know, all, everything over here is optional stuff. I even have a table that I can bring if I want to. Um, an extra water bag in case I'm doing more than two nights out there. So this is all optional equipment over here. All right, we're gonna go into pretend world and let's just say that I'm gonna be leaving tomorrow and I'm packing the rig and I'm watching the weather forecast of what it's gonna be like out there when I'm there for one or two nights. Now there's kind of three things that can happen. One, it's gonna be hot. Two, it's gonna be um, reasonably cold at night. It'll be about you know 35 degrees or the third uh, situation would be it's gonna be below freezing and it's gonna be really freaking cold. So let's just say in this trip that we're packing for that it's gonna be really freaking cold, all right? It's gonna be snowing. So I'm gonna bring every little trick that I have to stay warm at night. So taking a look here at the everything must go shelf, obviously I'm gonna need a sleeping bag. And then this little tent bag, which goes in my tent, has all my little goodies in it. That always goes. And from the other side over here on my optional uh, side, I'm gonna need uh, something to warm up my sleeping bag. So I've got my little warming kit here to warm my sleeping bag. And then I'm also gonna need a heater for my tent because I'm assuming that the inside of the tent's gonna be covered in ice and I'm gonna wanna be warm in there. And plus I'm gonna wanna dry the inside of that tent out in the morning. So I need a portable heater. All right, so let's go ahead and lay the stuff out on the garage floor and I'll show you how this whole thing works. Now, before we get started, I should mention that I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, this is all stuff that I bought with my own money uh, just because of the reputation was good on this stuff and uh, they had good reviews. So the first item you're gonna have to have, whether it's hot or cold, is a sleeping bag. Now I farted around for a long time with different sleeping bags. So I would get like, okay, this one for in case it's hot and this sleeping bag for in case it's you know kind of cold and this sleeping bag in case it's like zero degrees. So um, I struggled with a lot of different brands and a lot of different sleeping bags, just trying to make myself comfortable. When in reality, all I was doing was wasting money and wasting shelf space that I could store, I could use for storage of other items. So I was watching a video by Coyote Works, who's one of my favorite uh, YouTubers, and he was sleeping in a bag and he mentioned the Wiggy sleeping bag. This is kind of at the time when I was looking for a, a one bag to do everything. So he mentioned that he only uses Wiggy sleeping bags. Now he's a really trustworthy source, okay. zero degree Wiggy's Arctic bag with the built-in hood, um, and that's the bag that I chose, and I'm glad I did. Let's take the sucker out, have a look. This is my blow-up pillow. Um, this is by Climate. This is just like a quilted pillow. Um, my favorite pillow to use for sure. You just blow it up, and it fits right in here with the sleeping bag, so I always have my pillow with me. All right, so pulling this bag out. All right, so here's the bag all opened up, and, you, and I'm six foot four, about 240 pounds. And I fit in this thing great. There is plenty of room. 
I don't use mummy bags because they suck. This is a nice uh, rectangle bag, so you have lots of room to toss and turn. I'm a big dude and I fit in there just fine. Now this climate pillow, blow up pillow, just sits nicely right in here in the hood. So I just climb in this thing, zip it all the way up, and, I, and my, head's, my face is right there, and this is absolutely a beautiful sleeping bag. Now I wanna show you another really cool feature about this sleeping bag, is that the Wiggy sleeping bags actually come with sleeping booties as well. So, and they're kind of slippery, so they're not um, cloth, so your feet can still slip and slide um, inside your sleeping bag without getting everything all twisted and tangled up. So they give you a set of these sleeping booties. And I gotta tell you that usually when I'm in camp, like um, I'll keep hand warmers in my pockets. Then when I go to bed, I take them out of my pocket. So I stick them in the bottom of these sleeping booties. It doesn't need them, but it keeps your feet nice and toasty all night. So that is another big plus to buying a Wiggy sleeping bag. So you're probably wondering in the summertime, am I gonna cook in this thing? The answer is no, because it does have a zipper like all other sleeping bags. So in the summertime, I just simply, you know, lay this over myself and I get warm, I just uncover. And if I get cool, I just cover myself up again. So this works in the summer, you know, spring, and in the winter. So I have one sleeping bag for all seasons. So let's move on to the next step, two. So now it's gonna be really cold tonight, so I wanna warm inside the sleeping bag. So what I do is I just have this electric throw and a Dometic power supply. All right, so this is step two of staying warm. Um, now this is an electric throw. It's the kind where you keep it in your car and you can just plug it in to the 12 volt um, cigarette lighter in your car. And this goes like over your legs. Now, this thing is pretty much pointless. It is absolutely, does absolutely nothing to keep your legs warm. Um, but if you stick it in the sleeping bag, it makes the entire inside perfect all night. So here's another bonus to this little throw is that also there's no on and off switch and there's no temperature control, which is fine because it's not very warm, but it is when you put it in a sleeping bag and it never ever turns off. Now, why I like the feature that doesn't have on and off switch is because I don't want it turning off at night. A lot of times these are on a timer and they'll run for like 20 minutes and they'll shut off automatically. Then you keep waking up cold. This thing just keeps running all night. So this power supply will run this throw for about 11 hours, but it doesn't really matter because when I get up in the morning, this will have about 30% of the power left, but it charges in my car while I'm going exploring. So, and when I get to camp the next night, um, this will be at 100%. So, so basically you can go out for as long as you want and you're always gonna have a nice warm blanket all night. All right, so let's go ahead and shove this uh, electric throw in here. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly laid out because as you toss and turn all night, this is gonna kind of get tangled up. Um, but it is important that you keep the cord coming out of the top here of the sleeping bag, because this is where the power supply sits. Otherwise, you're gonna get tangled up in your cord. So, so the cord comes out here, and as long as this is in here, it doesn't really matter how it's in here. It doesn't matter if it's laid out flat. Most of the time, I end up with it kind of like this. I end up just hugging it, you know, like this all night, and it keeps me warm from here to here, and my sleeping booties are on, so I don't have to worry about my feet getting cold, but, but you really do get a little bit tangled up in it, but as long as it's in there, it doesn't really matter how it's in here. All right, so we got our sleeping bag, our booties, our throw in the sleeping bag, and our power supply, and we are toasty, toasty warm. So now we're gonna look at step three or tier three of this whole thing. This is the third step, and that is gonna be having yourself a, a, a little portable heater. So the heater that I use is a Cupid heater by Covia. And this little heater actually has two eye hooks I screwed in it because I have two little chains hanging from the roof, my rooftop tent, and it just kind of hangs in front of me just like this. So if you look at some of my videos where I'm up in the tent talking, you can actually see my heater hanging there. And it just sits right about here. And it has these uh, butane canisters, which I just keep two of them in my uh, rooftop tent bag. So it just runs on these little fuel tanks. And, and this thing will run easily off one of these for probably, probably a week. Now bear in mind, when I say that this will run for a week, I'm talking about like, I will turn this on but in the tent and zip the tent closed and it'll warm the tent up. So when I get up there and take off all my clothes when it's cold out, um, my ambient temperature inside the tent's gonna be warm. And then before I go to bed, I shut the thing off. And then when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is click it back on again. And that way I'm, and I give it about 10 minutes and then the whole tent's warm and I can go ahead and climb out of my bag, put on my clothes and everything's good to go. Now, another bonus to this little heater is that a lot of times I'll wake up, there'll be ice on the inside of my tent. And if I just let this run for a while, while I'm sitting up there getting dressed, it'll kind of um, dry out everything. It'll dry out the top of my sleeping bag because there's condensation in there. And it'll also melt the ice on the inside of the tent. 
and then I'll climb down. All right, so this heater can also sit just on the floor of your rooftop tent. So if you have, I have the reason why I hang is because I have a single rooftop tent, a single person. It's like a little coffin looking thing, um, but I don't have a double wide. But if you had a double wide, this is perfect. It'll just sit right next to your sleeping bag. You just click it on and it's nice and sturdy. It's not gonna fall over. And I don't think this has a carbon monoxide detector, but as long as you keep your windows cracked and you're awake, um, this will be just fine. So there you have it. That's my three-step sleeping system on how I stay warm camping. Now I'm gonna have links to all these things in the, in the description down below. So if you have any uh, questions on any of the kind of the specs of anything like the power supply or the could be a heater, you can just read about it on the links that I'm gonna provide for you guys. But if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments area down below. I'd be happy to get back to you with an answer. Um, if you have any comments on any of this equipment or whether you like it or not, make sure you put that down below as well. So I would like to say thank you for watching my video and hopefully you'll check out some more of my videos because I have lots of them and we will see you next time.